working on this one, I do them in Keynote and then I wanted to export this to PowerPoint. I prefer Keynote over PowerPoint, but they have different animations. So this is how I start all those lessons that I delivered. It might look like this at first. You're like, why all this like humble jumble like that? But yeah, this one starts. This first page is number one. And on the side over here, these are all the thumbnails of all the different pages that I have. So this is an entire preschool curriculum. All the topics that they need to know in preschool is what I've put together here. And I've made and the animations are interactive, so they move. It goes down until page, I did it to page what? 117. So for instance, this one right here. It looks like a hot mess, but it's because it has animations on it and you have to have the animations on it before it will work. So over here is the animations I build in. I'm building in with a particular animation and then when it comes in you can set the timing, how it goes out, the duration and the direction of it. So once I've put in all of that, I can check this page right here. I'll just click play. Oh, and I have to put it to, do I want it to start on a click? Click. Do I want a delay of how many seconds, how many half seconds until it starts? Or do you want to do it automatically? Or, yeah, and so this, so if I press play. Okay, there you go, that's better. Yeah. And that's just one. And then let's say for this one, this one is, I know my colors. Okay, so this one, I actually have to put the um, what's it called? The microphone on me, external microphone, and I have to record these here. I have to insert media, which is uh, auditory action. I start the audio. I record what I want on here, and when that's finished, I trim it, and I put the order. Make sure I, ha I have to put it on the right one because this is about colors. So I have to do a new one for each one of these, and hopefully when I play it, it will be looking like this. Let me see. Okay. Double check. So I guess this one I put it on click. Red. So I've just recorded myself seeing the colors. Blue. I have a little delay so that when they see the color, they might be able to say it before I say it. Green. Green. So that's done, and all the timings are set for that. This one is for colors, so I have to careful that's what I need to do I had to color all get these shapes make the shapes select the colors for each of them and then this one here I put the word yellow on top of it the color yellow underneath it and then I have an animation line here that will go up to there and this is the number one so this one should look like this okay so those are the naked ones and if I say, okay, this is what color? This is pink. The child might say pink. P -p 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 pink. P -p -p -p. To, as an extension, I might say, well, what letter of the alphabet do you think it starts with? Because you have some kids that already know that. And let's say, they might say this one, or they might say number three. And I say, well, let's check it. So when I click it, let's see, if you're right, if you're right, it will turn pink. And then I have the animation, so the word shows up. So that's just for pink. Yellow is the same one. I have to decide how I want the animations to move and so forth. So all the timings for all these are already done. So when I, my insomnia when I'm up at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning from the day before, this is what I'm doing. So I have all the colors there. I have same or different here. This one, which one is different? So we have some hearts here and I might say, well, which heart is different? And they might either, if they're with me, they can point to the screen or they can say they know numbers. They can say what number is different or they can say the color. So when I click it again somewhere, it would highlight. So I have it rigged to an animation that when I click it, the answer actually moves so they can tell if they're correct. The next one, we have M. M, M, M. Mm, which one is different? Give them some time, let them think, click, and the answer jumps upside down. So I have that done for all of these. Here I have to check, choose the letter that I want, 
the shapes, the colors, and all sorts of stuff like that. So I have numbers and the number shoot. So let's say for number two, let's see. What's this number, I might say? And they can count one, two. It's the number two. Two. I say the two, and I actually drew the animation um, line so it moves. And then I might say, well, if they're working with me, I might say, well, can you trace with your finger on the screen the number two? And they put the finger here, and they go down and say two. And then I chose a, this, these colored balls for three, and so on and three. so on. I know my body parts. Children need to know their body parts, the appropriate ones. So I have the face here and all the all the um, the features. So if I play it, I've put all the timings and animations so that. There you go. So they can point and tell me where it goes. And then I had to clip all of these sections and put them so when I click it. There's an invisible thing that makes it go up there. Yeah, it goes where it's supposed to go. That, that, that. So this is the one for the body parts, and it goes on and on. I've got a little girl. I've got a boy. Boy face. Boy puzzle pieces. This is um, matching letters, uppercase to lowercase letters. So let's. Well, obviously this A B C. Let's let me look at this one down here. Let's start with D E and F. So if I press play. So there's the D. I might say, oh, this is uppercase D. I wouldn't wonder which one at the bottom is the lowercase D. They might point to the correct one, and if I click it, it will give the answer. So I make those squiggles, use the directions, and then I make sure the answer does a wiggle, wiggle, woggle, woggle. Same thing, uppercase E, lowercase E. So, you know, it has to start with what am I going to use to do this? Okay, I'm going to use fish. So I had to find the appropriate fish, make sure I remove any backgrounds of any of the fish, so it's a PNG file, import them. What shape am I going to use for the the letter, the font that I'm going to use, the size I'm going to use. I had to use this font. It's just different from all the rest because the eyes, they have a lot of eyes that are, um, have just like a straight line and that confuses the kids. So, you know, I even have these ones here that I have to put in there and, yeah. Sometimes I use these at Be Smart and I, I um, print them out and I cut them out and I place them in different areas so the kids are more familiar with it. And I have lots of these presentations, and this is what we'll to put together because at Be Smart we're doing lots of therapy, and we have lots of equipment. We have um, vision equipment as well, and gross motor and climbing walls. And obviously, you can't do that during the lockdown. So I had to focus more on the academic portions and the visual discrimination and stuff like that. So that's what I was doing, and that's why I need a computer because this this computer dies. Well, she says, I've ran out of application memory. Basically, basically, she does not have enough power to sustain all the things I need her to do. So, yeah, it's a lot of them. So, for the geography one here, I, you might have seen that. Uh, vowel combinations, I animate those to help the kids. I have the hopscotch map multiplication and addition where the kids... Yeah. I don't, I can't, this is tiring me, I was just looking at it, <laughs> so that's what I do all day, so now I've got to go and get, mm, I need to answer some wonderful emails, so I'm going to take a break and do that, and I'll check in with you another time, a little bit later, because I have a meeting, enjoy.